But why on earth do we do in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Amen. We don't often reflect on this, and this is what I want to talk about here with you as we're looking at the cross this weekend. I'd like to start by talking a bit about the cross, because we become so accustomed to it. We don't realize what a scandal the cross was in the ancient world. What a difficult thing the cross was for the apostles to profess, to say we were saved by the cross. St. Paul writes about this in his first letter to the Corinthians. Now, I've put the Bible verses up on this uh, PowerPoint slide, and I also have them on your handout. I'm a college professor. I have young students in the classroom, and I know that our attention spans are not what they used to be. So my goal is to come at you at every direction, right? <laughs> so if you stop paying attention to your handout, you might, your eyes will wander, oh, wait, there's a talk going on. And I realize we are a screen generation, and so people like to see things on a screen, so there's your screen for you. And I spent some time doing some nice fancy transitions, right? You know, some oohs and ahs are appropriate at the right... Anyway. anyway. But I'm trying to uh, help you really immerse yourself in this material. Let's start with what St. Paul has to say. He says this, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? The wisdom of the world is that you conquer by dominating your enemies, by demonstrating your strength. The wisdom of the world is going to scoff at the cross. Here is where victory is won. St. Paul says this, For Jews demand signs, and Greeks seek wisdom. The Jews want to see amazing miracles, like the parting of the Red Sea. How do we know that our God is the one true God? Because he brought down hail on the Egyptians. How do we know that our God is the one true God? Because he brought down fire at Mount Carmel. They want to see signs. The word signs was linked with the miracles of Moses and Elijah in the Old Testament. And the Greeks want wisdom. What he means by that is knowledge. Wisdom, like worldly wisdom. Wisdom you would get from learning. The Greeks are associated with, of course, with, with, of course Athens and the great philosophers like Socrates and Plato and Aristotle. The Greeks prided themselves in these figures. You know, other people would say, like in America, Socrates. Yeah, I like Socrates, right? <laughs> the Greeks were like, no, we, our culture, reprise wisdom. They wanted to see people argue in the most flowery language. That's how you demonstrate your power, your glory. But St. Paul says, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block, a scandal to both Jews and folly to the Gentiles. It's a stumbling block for Jews. What, you mean he conquers by dying? Well, that doesn't seem like much of a victory. By suffering? And to the Greeks, it seems like folly, stupidity. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. They wanted to see power in the signs and the might. They wanted to see wisdom in eloquent speech. Jesus crucified is our power in wisdom, St. Paul says. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men. I love that. The foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. God doesn't have to demonstrate his power by flexing his muscles. In fact, he demonstrates his power by showing how weakness is power. Now, we often see crucifixes as Catholics. They're in our churches. We wear them even around our necks. 
But really up until Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion, I think for a lot of people, the horror of crucifixion was something that was overlooked. Let's talk about the horror of crucifixion. What would you think if somebody came to a family meal, like Thanksgiving, with a guillotine as a necklace? An electric chair. Here's my electric chair. I brought you a nice gift for your birthday. I'd like to give, it's a noose. It's a little necklace of a noose. Wouldn't that be nice? As Catholics, the center of our iconography is a cross. This was a sign of terror in the ancient world. The Romans perfected crucifixion. It existed before the Roman Empire, but they used it to absolutely strike terror in the hearts of anyone who would oppose them. We think of crucifixion in terms of Jesus' death, but we know that many people besides Jesus were crucified in the ancient world. We know of mass executions involving crucifixions, where hundreds and thousands of people died. For example, 6,000 followers of Spartacus were put to death on crosses as a victory, as part of a victory celebration on the Appian Way in 71 BC, outside Rome, leading into the city, was this famous street, famous way, the Appian Way. And the Romans lined it with the crosses of the Spartans, who they, who they defeated, the followers, I'm, I'm sorry, of Spartacus. Alexander crucified 2,000 survivors from a siege at Tyre. He captured the city, fought against the city, the people surrendered, 2,000 people surrendered, so what did he do? He crucified them on the shores of the Mediterranean. Caligula would have Jews tortured and crucified in an amphitheater just to entertain the Alexandrians. Runaway slaves would be victims of crucifixion. In particular, that would include, of course, women and children. You often don't think of women and children being crucified. But if you were a runaway slave and you were a woman or you were a child, you would be put to death in this way. Crucifixion, however, was especially linked with lawlessness, with criminals, with the riffraff. Plutarch writes, each criminal is condemned, each criminal condemned to death bears his cross on his back. To bear your cross is a sign of shame. In fact, that was the whole point of crucifixion. The whole point of crucifixion was not glory. The whole point of crucifixion was to humiliate the victim. You were stripped naked, you were scourged, and anyone who's seen the passion of Christ knows what that would have involved. And some people have suggested that the passion of the Christ went too far, that this wasn't realistic, that no one would have suffered quite like that at scourging. Actually, that's not true. Josephus, a first century Jewish writer, tells us that when you were scourged, they literally peeled the skin from your body. But that wasn't the end of your torture. That was just the beginning of it. Because they would force you, after you'd been scourged, to march through the streets while the people pointed at you and derided you and laughed at you. And then you were lifted up. You were lifted up. Look at where hoisting you up. Think of when someone wins a football game. They pick you up and they put you on their shoulders. But there was a different kind of lifting up. Joel Marcus, a New Testament scholar, calls it parodic exaltation, a parody of exaltation. If you know the accounts of Jesus' death in the New Testament, you know all about this. Remember, they gave him a crown of thorns, a purple cloak, a reed. Oh, here's your scepter, mighty king. And they bow down to him and they mock him. Oh, you thought you were a king? You thought you were special? You thought that you were a powerful man? We will beat you until you're nearly dead. We will flog you until you are bleeding from every pore of your body, and then we're going to crucify you. They would take you up to the hill of crucifixion, 
where many other people had been crucified, of course. And um, Jesus actually died uh, rather quickly on the cross. Many deaths would take quite a long time. And uh, oftentimes, while people were hanging on the cross, the birds would come and pick at their flesh. After they died, their body would be given to the birds to eat. You'd have rotting corpses all around you there on Golgotha. This is where the king of kings, this is where the prince of peace, this is where our Lord, our Redeemer, who loves us beyond all of our comprehension, this is where his life comes to an end. 